I'm just going to kind of randomly go through how I made my page and then how I made the stickers in different ways that you can do that for a better sticker. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Here is the template. The download link is in the beginning of the thread and it'll be available for about a week and then the template is no longer available. Um, so just like this, it's all done. I've got my photo here that I'm gonna drag in. First, I'm gonna go and using the move tool, control click and get to the photo layer that you can see here. And drag the photo above that, kind of angle it a little bit. And then I'm going to clip it to that layer. And there we go, presto glamo, it's all done. Um, then for the title, which is right here, all the good feels, that's what I wanted to make into a sticker and then move it above my photo. So the way I do that is I command click on the new layer and that puts a layer below my title layer. And then when I command and hold over the title layer, you see the um, dotted lines for the marching ants. So I click on that and it selects my title. Go up to selection and modify and expand. And I like to go with 12. I don't know why, um, just in my design experience, 12 seems to be a good amount of a border. Sometimes though, when it sees the edges of an object, it's not super smooth. Um, you can kind of see it in here, it can get kind of chunky. So I like to go up and go to select, modify and smooth. I smooth it generally six pixels, sometimes as much as nine. And then option, Delete will fill with my background color. Whoops, and uh, it does not. Hiccup, a little hiccup there, let's see. It's Command Delete that fills with background color. And one of the things you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in on it, that maybe these areas here should be filled, whoops, should be filled too. So holding down the shift key and having the lasso tool, I'm going to click and add those to my selection. Let's see. Anywhere it's kind of small. And in some titles that you'll see that I put in collections, even this area would be filled. And all you would have to do if you wanted to do that for yours is to go here, follow the outline. And presto blamo, it's all, all filled. And I do a command delete again, and it goes to white. So I've got a nice sticker there, but to really make it look like a sticker, I add a drop, drop style, drop shadow style which I have a preset for, and I'm going to click on that, and then we'll go up and show you what that is, since I don't remember. Layer, you can tell I don't use the menus very much. I don't even remember where stuff is. So I do a light opacity on my shadows, about 40, somewhere between 40 and 50%, it depends. And this one, I wanted it, the shadow to move straight down. I didn't want it off to the side. Something about it going straight down, I liked. No, no technical explanation for that, just more of a visual feel. And I set it for 18. So you can see those preferences. And then I'm gonna zoom in out a little bit. All right, so I've got my sticker background. I've got my word art holding down shift. I'm gonna click, select both. And I want to move them to the layer above my frame so that I can move them over the photo. 
I don't know that I want her mouth cover. I don't even know what I did in my page. But um, sometimes, like, see, okay, I'm just going to tell you a little design annoyance. This area here, that would be called, like, trap space. And it visually conflicts, and it can cause visual distress, I guess. So a lot of times I like to not have that. Sometimes I just let it go and think I'm overthinking, but that's just a little um, thing. If you notice in any of my designs, um, usually I try not to have that. So now that we have the title done, I'm gonna go to the sticker, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, so I'm going to actually change my color here. So it's something very visible. So again, I'm going to command click on the new layer and a new layer is going to come below the botanical sketch. And I'm going to command click on that sketch and get the marching ants. Now with this one, I'm going to select, modify, and expand again. And I'm expanding the 12 pixels. So you can see major pain in the neck factor with all of these little areas. So I'm going to option delete and fill with my foreground color. And then instead of having to go in there and manually, um, manually correct all those pockets and holes, I'm gonna take the magic wand tool and click outside the flower. I'm also gonna click holding down the shift key and you can see I have some embarrassing stray pixels here. So I'm gonna use the lasso tool and just get rid of those. Sorry about that, I thought I had fixed them. Um, and now you can see we have the reverse of the flower selected. And if you do shift command and I, or select and inverse, there it is, it will move the selection to be um, the flower area instead of the background area. It's just easier to be selecting the background area. I'm going to get rid of this layer or hide the visibility, make a new layer above it, and I'm going to command delete, and that's going to fill with my background color with the white. Mm -hmm. And again, go to the drop shadow, and oh, you know what I didn't do? told you I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. Um, I didn't smooth it, which especially in something this detailed, smoothing really helps it not be quite as chunky. And if you notice like chunky edges um, that aren't smooth on your um, stickers, you can always smooth a little bit more. And I'm gonna see here, I've got a couple little hiccups. There was one little spot that didn't get filled. So I'm just gonna fill that. And sometimes it's easy to notice those when you add the shadow, you'll notice a spot got missed or something. So holding the shift key, I'm gonna select the sticker background and the botanical sticker. And I think maybe, I don't remember if I moved it above. Kind of looks nice like that. So the watery seashell here. Mm. To make that a sticker could be a task. So let's go here. I'm gonna make a layer below it. I'm going to command click to make the selection. I'm going to go up and expand my selection. You can see it all kinds of nastiness. Um, so we take the lasso tool. I hold down the option key for the delete or for the negative symbol. That means I'm getting rid of stuff. I'm just gonna get rid of the stray stuff for right now. And let's see, what would I do with this? Um, I, I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just kind of following this edge for right now. And then we'll show you how to clean that up. All right. Oh, 
And you can see there's some up here that should be kind of red. Okay. So we fill, and you can still see we have all this junk around it. Can you see in here? You can see all this like light stuff because there's all kinds of splatters when it comes to the watery stuff. So I'm going to command click on this. Now I, um, I'm old school and I still would prefer Photoshop CS3, quite honestly. Um, so I do go back, I Googled and found some of the ways to go back to previous options. Um, because the new Creative Cloud, you know, they keep changing things and I would rather not change. <laughs> I like things to be the same. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and go to select and go to my selected mask. And this brings up the refine edge dialog box the way it used to be before um, Creative Cloud 2020. And you can see it's showing through the color from the background. It's probably not the best color. But what I like to do is shift my edge. So shift the edge and see how all that stuff's going away. And it's really kind of smoothing it out. Feather it a little bit, smooth it a little bit, bump up my cr contrast and give me a harsher um, line. And I'm gonna say okay. You can still see we still have junk, but I'm going to um, shift command and um, inverse, so an I, which is inversing my selection, and delete. And see it got rid of a lot of the junk, but it also made us lose a lot of the sticker. So now I'll go up again and go to modify, expand, go to 12. Okay, wait. That was a hiccup. We need to, again, shift command and I to inverse our selection back to the shell because it was on the background and we want it to be on the shell here. Now I'll go up and select modify and expand. And that does pretty good. So we go to the lasso tool, hold down the shift so that I've got the plus sign add to my selection here. Just kind of following the pencil line. You know, because it is artsy and a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. And now with this one, it's probably even more important that you smooth it. So for this one, we're going to smooth it. I'm gonna go with nine on this one. And did you see how, like watch right here. See how it got rid of that ding? Mm -hmm. So the smoothing really helps even things out. And then I did a command delete and got a nice sticker. You can tell when you add the drop shadow to it. Okay, it looks like we have a couple areas that maybe weren't solid. So what we can do is take the magic wand tool, select in the background, again, inverse your selection, and again, fill with the background color. And that takes care of filling in all the areas that weren't quite solid. Now, if you can also see then that the painted part extends beyond the sticker. And so if you're going for realism in your page, we even have some splatters up here. You may not want all of those. So if you just go up to the shell la layer, go back again, select an inverse, and hit delete, then all of that will go away. And you've can find the drawing shape to the shape of your sticker. Did that work? Yes, that's that wonderful. Yeah, um, Linda is asking if you're using um, a pen, Katie, to I do am. your selecting. I am. I'm using a Wacom, Wacom, whatever you call it, tablet. Okay, so yep. I've used a tablet since 87. 
when they first came out. Okay, so in my page, whoops, didn't like that I did that. In my page, I use the text path at the top just to add the date and the description, but I wanted to include some of the story as well. So, which I was supposed to, I edited for posting. Um, okay, so to make this custom text path, go back here and it's not going like that. And I'm going to create a text path to follow the flower. So if you select your pen tool and just click and then click again and then click and drag and you get your directional arrows. I generally get rid of the forward directional arrow by holding down the option key and clicking on the point. Because if I don't, it already kind of puts this lump in it that maybe I don't want. I like to have more control over how big my, how big my lumps are, which in <laughs> quarantine 15, we don't have any control anymore. <laughs> <laughs> lumps are out of control, what can I say? So for this one though, I am just going straight down, so I'm gonna leave the forward directional, but now I wanna cut over to the left, so definitely get rid of the forward directional, hold down the shift key for a straight line, and click to go up. To edit this path, you can see it's kind of jaggy here. And we want it to be straighter. So there we go. And we're going to come up here, select this copy. And when I move the text tool over the box I created and click, it adds that text and I believe it's centered. So if I made it flush left, you would see how it wraps. And it's really easy to modify your paths too. Just um, click on this point, drag it up, because I want that type to come all the way over to the left. I didn't really like how it was hanging out there. And you can do the same thing down below if you needed to add more type. You could just drag your box down. Does anyone have any questions about making text paths? It really is a great way to customize your page. I mean, you could even do one here. And this is an example of how the forward directional lines can help me create a more natural curve without a lot of work because it follows the direction that you're going. Select my text tool, make sure I'm on the left. And there, I've got a nice, quick, easy path. I followed the shape and um, can easily add text. I mean, you can do that around your photos, around a circle, around anything. You can really um, get creative with your type. 